guys, welcome to Homesteading Through Our Eyes. Today is going to be a update on Lyme disease that I've been going through. share my story about Lyme disease with you because I know that a lot of people are going through what I'm going through. Uh, lots of different symptoms but all battling this horrible bacteria come that they call Lyme disease. So I want to just share with you what's going on with me. Uh, it's been two weeks since I started the antibiotic doxycycline. I got a 30-day prescription, which is the typical prescription to get for Lyme disease. Um, some people are on it for even longer than that. I'm hoping that the 30 days is good enough because I'm not a big fan of antibiotics, but with, but with this Lyme disease, um, it seems like it is a must. It is a bacteria that is very hard for your body to fight off on its own, especially if your immune system has been weakened. So what happened with me, what I believe, is that I kind of tweaked my ankle a tiny bit and that brought my immune system down as it tried to heal my ankle and the bacteria that I have been harboring in my body for the last two years since I got Lyme disease two years ago um, was able to thrive. It went to my inflammation and kind of just took over. The ankle started off swollen then the knee became extremely swollen as well as pain throughout my entire leg and once it spread into the second leg I knew that it wasn't just a sprain and it was something else that was going on and I did some research and Lyme disease loves to go to your joints it likes to feed on your cartilage it has all the building blocks for life, not all, but it has a lot of what it needs to live from your cartilage. And so if you have joint problems, um, it could be from this bacteria that is normally associated with Lyme disease. So after I realized it was Lyme, I went to the doctor and got prescribed doxycycline and I wouldn't say that the doctor would have known that it was Lyme had I not been proactive about it and kind of persuaded the doctor that it was Lyme because then if you just show up at the doctor's office with some swollen knees and ankles I don't think their first thought is going to be you have a bacterial infection. Some doctors may, but not a lot. I mean, it's very hard to diagnose Lyme because it's just swollen knees. Like, who would have thought that it was a bacteria? But a couple days after starting the doxycycline, I started feeling a lot better. The pain went away. Um, the left, the left leg, is uh, completely fine now. The right leg, where the infection started, is still quite swollen. Uh, the pain isn't there, but the swollen leg um, really affects my walking. I can't bend my knee. It does become painful when I try to bend it. But after two weeks, it is considerably better. I started out walking 
with two crutches. I needed help getting out of bed. I needed help getting down the stairs. I needed help getting out of the car. It was pretty horrible. And because it's so debilitating, it really messes with your mind as well. So instead of having a clear mind to be able to make clear decisions and stay positive, my mind was really affected and I was depressed and wondering if I was ever going to walk again. And it's not a good way to live. And it's sad that a lot of people have to go through this. Uh, I guess it's just part of our life, but it's not a fun part of our life. So if you're going through Lyme or joint pains or anything, you really should do some research. I would not leave my health up to a doctor. I don't care how well I know the doctor or not. That doctor does not know my body. It does not know your body like you know your body. And you really should do some research. There is so much research. There is so much information available to you that it's almost irresponsible not to do your own research. So get on the internet sort through all that because there's a lot of information on the internet but sort through the information try to find what is good information go to the library and use the library system because it's a free system you can take out as many books as you want it doesn't cost you anything and my library, you can um, request books from this whole huge library system that we have. So there's always a book that I need. It's very rare that a book that I want is not available to me for free. Get some library books. Here's one that I'm reading right now. I'm about a third of the way through it. I have learned so much information and more than I can honestly comprehend, but still it is absorbing into me. And I'm learning some more herbs that I should be adding to my already large collection of herbs that I take. Uh, so here's this one. This is a great book if you're going through Lyme or some of your family members are going through Lyme, or if you're a doctor and you need to be aware of what's going on with this bacteria. So check this book out. I also got this book from the library. I haven't got a chance to read it yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing if the information matches up with the other book or what other things I can learn from this. I have a lot of time where I'm just sitting around or lying around because I am still in pain and I am still not able to really get around much. So I have a lot of time to read. I also got this book from the library, which I haven't got a chance to start yet, about antibiotics because I'm taking them for 30 days. So I kind of want to know what's going on with them. What's going on in my body? I want to know if I'm taking the right amount. I want to know. I don't have the internet here in the yurt, so I really rely on the library system and the books a lot. So get yourself a library card, get yourself to the library, and do some research. I will show you all the herbs I'm taking right now. And in the description, I'm going to put a couple of the new ones I'm going to be getting. I don't have them um, with me right now, uh, and I also can't really pronounce them, so I'll just put them in the description for you to check out as well. So I'm just going to go th quickly through um, the herbs that I'm taking right now, because 
antibiotics, you shouldn't really rely on antibiotics alone. They do help considerably, and sometimes they'll, you know, clear it right up, but sometimes your body needs some help. So it's always good to give your body as much help as possible, really boost your immune system, and why not? These are natural, as natural as you can get sometimes. I mean, there's still some added ingredients in here that I'm not happy with, but I'm sure it does more harm than good. I'm sure it does more good than harm. So, cat's claw is supposed to be a good one for joint pain. Teasel root, also very good for joint. Oregano oil is like a natural antibiotic. And what I've read is that these can all be taken alongside, along with your antibiotic. And that's what I've been doing. I haven't had a problem with it. You know, if you have a problem with it, don't do it. But do whatever works for you. Ginkgo biloba. I have some olive leaf extract, which is a good for your immune system. Boost your immune system. Chinese skull cap. It's supposed to be a really good one. There's an American and there's a Chinese. And the Chinese use the root. And the Americans use the leaf, and the root is supposed to be much better for you. Uh, milk thistle is supposed to help with your liver, cleansing your liver. And this one, which I'm not sure exactly how to say. I'm also taking an organic turmeric tincture, which helps with pain and other stuff as well. This is actually from an Etsy store, um, Nature's Healing Kiss .etsy .com. Um, This store has a lot of really good tinctures and uh, handmade creams and such. I'm also using one of their um, peppermint tea tree oil that I put all over my leg to help with the swelling. And magnesium. And I think that's all that I have here. And like I said, I'm going to be getting a couple more um, that this book recommended. 